Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Can everyone hear me? We're going to start the program. Thank you all. Welcome to the Ottawa County Ohio History Barn Dedication Ceremony. I'd like to take a few moments to thank a number of individuals who were involved in bringing this fantastic project about. First, Steve George from the Ohio History Connection. Thank you for your passion for preserving these wonderful historic Ohio barns and for your occasional gentle nudge <laughs> in moving the project along. I didn't think you'd notice. <laughs> Next, we would all not be in this particular place today without our barn owners, Bonnie and Ron Schimming. Thank you for accepting our invitation to showcase your beautiful barn and you were a true joy to work with. We'd also like to thank Scott Hagen, a barn artist who is not here today. <laughs> He's down working on the Bob Evans Farms. But I did ask him if I could do a uh, cut out of him, but he said no. <laughs> We'd also like to thank the National Park Service, Perry's Victory and International Peace Memorial on Putin Bay, especially Maggie, where's Maggie? Back to Thank you for providing all the volunteers, the equipment, and the unit programs. It was outstanding. Finally, the Ottawa County Peanut Bar Committee, a dedicated group of individuals, definitely passionate about history, right down to the color of Oliver Perry's eyes. And we know they're correct, because he's over there. <laughs> within my memory and I'm <laughs> I'm proud that it happened on my watch although I had precious little to do with it the engine of progress was certainly Linda and the committee uh, function under her guidance I was telling Mrs. Schimming this is the perfect bar in the perfect place now why is it the perfect place. Well, it's near the geographic center of Ottawa County, and as you may recall, the Battle of Lake Erie took place on a line roughly from Rattlesnake Island to West Sister Island. So that puts most of the battle in western Ottawa County, and a significant part of it exactly due north of this barn. So that's that's why I think it's the perfect barn in the perfect place. We have the barn. Let me tell you how we went about choosing our barn hero. First of all, we thought of the eras of history that affected Ottawa County. And the first certainly was the era of the War of 1812. The second era that had countywide import was Prohibition. But we'll put that aside. <laughs> the, the War of 1812 came to Ottawa County four separate times. The first, of course, was the skirmish on the peninsula that happened September uh, 29, 30, and October 1 of 1812. We commemorated that the bicentennial of that two years ago with big doings at the Keeper's House. The second event that came to Ottawa County had to do with the building of Fort Meigs. Um, General Harrison undertook the building of Fort Meigs, and while he was building, he received information that Tecumseh 
and the British were planning a siege of Fort Meg. So before they could effect the siege, he simply withdrew his garrison, moved it to the banks of the Little Portage River, which would be the Hupfinger Farm today on Dar Hupfinger Road off Route 53. And he waited out the siege. Uh, Tecumseh thought that Harrison and his troops had dug in inside Fort Meigs, and that prompted Tecumseh's famous remark, you live like groundhogs, come out and fight like men. Well, when Tecumseh found that the fort was truly empty and there was nobody home, he tried to set fire to it. But because it rained the entire time and the fort was built with green oak from the Black Swamp, he just couldn't get the fire going. So he left. Harrison brought his troops back to Fort Meigs, and the war continued on from that point. Um, the third event was the Battle of Lake Erie, and we all know, uh, or we should know, a great deal about the Battle of Lake Erie. If you let me divert for a moment for just a story that is partially relevant, I attended the um, dedication of the new visitor center at Putten Bay, and speaker after speaker after speaker got up and told us that if Perry had lost, we'd all be Canadians today. The last speaker was the Canadian consul. <laughs> and he got up, put his hand on the podium, looked out the cut between Middle Bass and Ballast Island toward Pelee Island, and he said, you know, folks, that's not Bangladesh out there. <laughs> and he didn't even mention their wonderful health care system. <laughs> so that was the third event. The fourth event, nearly uh, closely aligned to it, was when um, General Harrison was moving his troops northward from Fort Delaware to Fort Seneca because um, Krogan successfully defended Fort Stevenson. He was able to move up to Fort Stevenson and then bring his troops to the foot of Fulton Street in Port Clinton. He had 4,500 infantrymen and 1,000 mounted Kentucky militiamen camped at the foot of Fulton Street in Port Clinton. Well, you can't take horses on ships. So they built a... Um, a hedgerow along Fulton Street from the lake to the bay, and they turned these thousand horses loose on the Danbury Peninsula. And then after the battle, Perry came over with his ships, transported all these troops, or most of them, to Putten Bay, and then to East Sister Island, from which they launched the amphibious invasion of Canada. So those were the, the four events that affected Ottawa County during the... Um, War of 1812. So did the choice for our barn actually come down between Oliver Hazard Perry and Alvin Carpus? Well, certainly not. <laughs> certainly not. We knew from the start that Perry was our man, and we're very proud that this uh, project proceeded so successfully. Um, the fact that the National Park Service here is a surprise to me, at least, and uh, an honor. And Linda, again, thank you for all your hard work. Thank you. And now from the Ohio History Connection, Steve George. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm at the. Uh, my, I had a birthday the other day, and uh, I, I, be, I think that part of my life has started where I'm beginning to think of what's going to be in my obituary. And uh, it occurred to me that there will be the word barn will appear. <laughs> um, I had the privilege years ago of directing the Ohio Bicentennial Commission. I worked with one of Ottawa County's own, Beth Hansen. Um, we called her Little Beth Hanson at the time. 
we were all a little in sync at that time. But, um, but we had this idea about how to advertise the Bicentennial on a very limited budget, which was to hire uh, uh, somebody to go out and paint our logo on Barnes. We found a young man, he'd not even shaved yet, speaking of youth. Um, he lived down in Belmont County near the Ohio River. And we hired him because we had confidence that he would be able to undertake this project. And truthfully, the first one he did was, shall we say, kind of lame. It, the, the Ohio was sort of wobbly, and, um, and uh, but by about the third time he did it, he, was, he just did a superb job. And now he's turned that talent, and it really is talent, into a successful Ohio business. Uh, really a business that takes him all over the North American continent now. But we always hoped at the time of the Bicentennial to do something more substantive. And so this new series of barns, and this is the fifth one, will treat um, Ohio subjects that are really superlatives. And the Toledo Blade, is, is anyone from the Blade here today? Uh, you guys ran a wonderful story the other day about this. We appreciate it. But I, w I was asked by the reporter about it, and I mentioned that um, there's really no end to the Ohio topics that you can imagine on on barns. I think we're going to run out of barns before we run out of Ohio topics. I'd just like to say some thank you. First of all, thank you to Commodore Perry. You know, it wasn't every day in the 18th and 19th century that Britain's Royal Navy was defeated. And I think we sometimes forget that. Britain ruled the ruled Britannia, right? Ruled the waves. And that meant Lake Erie, too, up until 1813. So thank you, Commodore Perry. Um, thank you to um, uh, the Ohio History Connections membership and to the support that we get from the Ohio General Assembly. Thank you, Representative Art and Senator Gardner. We generally greatly appreciate that. Uh, this barn was paid for with private dollars, and we expect to continue this project and maybe even accelerate it beginning next fall um, around the state of Ohio. So we've kind of got our sea legs, and uh, if, if money can be gathered up for it, we'll do a lot more Ohio superlatives beginning next summer. So, and thank you, last of all, Linda. Um, uh, she mentioned about nudging her. I think more often she got the better end of the deal. So she was nudging me on the phone very persistently every day, and uh, this would not have happened without her hard work. guests who are now like to introduce. Representing Governor John Kasich is Luann Cook. And I'd like to ask <coughs> Bonnie and Ron, 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 to come on up. It's a real privilege to be here. And I'm, I'm kind of Ohio history buff and Northwest Ohio. And it's, it's really thrilling to see these things going on. I can remember back in 2003 when we did the barns then. So when I found the Ohio History Connection was doing these barns, I just thought, it's just really delightful. And it will mean that much more for tourism in this state. So on behalf of the governor, I do have, um, I do have a proclamation for the Shimming family. And I also have one for Mary. I'd like the Mary to, to um, receive it. It's from the Ottawa County Historical Society. And it's uh, from the state of Ohio, Governor Kasich and Mary Taylor. And on behalf of the state of Ohio, we are proud to recognize your partnership with Ohio History Connection to get county-themed barn murals painted in all 88 Ohio counties. These murals will serve as a reminder of Ohio's rich history. And we commend the Shimming family for being a part of this endeavor. The mural on the Shimming family barn, which has been in their family for more than seven decades, helps ensure our state's history is preserved, protected, and remembered for future generations. We look forward to the positive impact these murals will have on communities throughout our state, and we extend our best wishes for continued success. Ohio History Connection on this 22nd day of September 2017, John R. Kasich, Governor, Mary Taylor, Governor, temperature 92. <laughs>
Bosserman representing Congressman Bob Latta. And it's really a privilege to be out here today. I actually was able to see the barn yesterday. We were out in McGee Marsh, and so on the way home, I got a little sneak peek. So it was uh, very cool to see it up. And that is kind of uh, one of the perks of the job is being able to drive around Northwest Ohio. And I look forward to uh, seeing the barn and hopefully more to come up in the coming years uh, throughout the counties of Northwest Ohio, depicting the rich history that we have. So I do have a proclamation I'll present you, uh, Linda, for the Ottawa County Historical Society. And uh, Congressman Latta, I think these two things fit perfectly for him. He's a lover of history and of Lake Erie. And so on behalf of Congressman Latta and the people of the 5th Congressional District, congratulations to you and the volunteers and all the hard work that went into this barn. And thank you for the work that you do preserving and celebrating the history here in Ottawa County. So thank congratulations. You very much. Thank you very much. Gonna do it together All right. in, in the interest and of time. Thank you very much. I'm honored to be here today. Uh, I'm here for two reasons. Number one, I'm a former history teacher. This is really important. And if you're here today, you love history too, and you think it's important as well. And the other reason is I'm generally known as Steve Arndt's assistant. So, <laughs> so I get to do the warm-up act for Representative Arndt, which I'm glad to do. But no, thank you for your leadership, the local county leadership, the state leadership. have a great relationship with the Ohio History Connection. I'm actually the chairman of the Finance Subcommittee that handles the History Connection's budget. Uh, so I get invited to a few extra things as well. Um, but this is uh, another... Um, uh, day of pride for Ottawa County in this region, and uh, I'm honored to be here. Representative Arndt. It's always difficult to follow uh, people such as uh, uh, Paul Moon, former judge, uh, with all of his history. You know. I'm not finished <laughs> my, my wife uh, and my uh, two sons are very much history uh, uh, focused, and so every time we go over to Putin Bay, we go into the uh, the Welcome Center, and we always learn additional information about our rich heritage. And that is one thing that I've always found, is that especially with the 89th District, we are such a diverse district. I think it's the best district in the state of Ohio with, when you go back to history and, and what we have to offer and what we can learn from uh, here in Ohio, right here in the 89th District. Uh, but without further ado, uh, Linda, I also have a commendation on behalf of the Senator and myself from okay. the state, uh, thanking the uh, Ottawa County Historical Society for partnering with the Ohio History Channel and making sure that now the West is not the East. There you go. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and feasibly is, uh, Ottawa County is actually one of the longest counties in the state. The longest. And um, you know, in my district, uh, as well as with the Senator, we have more shoreline, more water than any other uh, district in the state of Ohio as well. So it's nice to be able to make sure that the entire county knows and understands the history of Ottawa County and what we play. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Mark Stahl wasn't able to be here today. I'd certainly like to say thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to be part of this. I like to offer thanks to Ron and Bonnie for maintaining the barn. Believe me, I have a background with barns. I know a little bit of some Bob. I know they're a pain to keep keep up and maintain and everything. And God bless you for doing that. It, it's, uh, it's truly you've created a, uh, a, a destination for Ottawa County. And Ohio, Ottawa County does have a huge historical significance from the Marblehead Lighthouse to the, the, the Federal Refuge next door to the Privy in Genoa, which some of you may or may not know about. Um, <laughs> there, there's all kinds of history in this in this county. And, and what that does, it brings people here and, and, and maybe otherwise wouldn't, wouldn't be coming here. But more important than that, it brings them here and they'll spend their money. And that's the important thing for, for the county. 
and the Commodore Perry. God bless you, sir, for standing out there in the sun in that god awful outfit you got on. You know, you, you get a double A plus for that. Good for you. So, uh, again, Linda, thank you so much for, for what you've done with us, and don't give up the ship. National Park Service Superintendent for the Perry's Victory and International Peace Memorial, Barbara Furon. Hi everyone. Just 11 days, 204 years ago, a 28-year-old Oliver Hazard Perry overcame insurmountable odds to engage the British, British fleet on Lake Erie and win a naval battle that changed the momentum of War of 1812. The change was in favor of a young America that was fighting its second war of independence with Great Britain. Perry was a seasoned sailor, having become a midshipman at 13 years old. He was tenacious. He would not give up the day of the battle. The wind was not in his favor, and the American fleet struggled to even get within range to engage the British. Then the wind suddenly changed direction. His second in command, Jesse D. Elliott, failed to bring the U.S. Brig Niagara to the forefront to engage the HMS Queen Charlotte, and that resulted in the HMS Detroit and Queen Charlotte battering Perry's flagship, the U.S. Brig Lawrence, without mercy. Don't give up the ship. The dying words of James Lawrence, Perry's best friend who died in a previous naval engagement, were stitched to make up Perry's motto flag. But he did briefly abandon the Lawrence to get into the longboat and have his men row him through 20 minutes of cannon fire to the virtually untouched Niagara. He took command and the rest, as they say, is history. Robert Barclay, in command of the British fleet, spoke highly of Perry and his kindness and fair treatment of the British sailors after the battle. Perry chose to bury three of his officers, Lieutenant John Brooks and Midshipman Henry Lobb and John Clark, Alongside their British brothers, Captain Robert Frennis, Lieutenant John Garland, Lieutenant James Garden, the day after the battle, their remains were moved to a crypt beneath the rotunda of the memorial in 1913. Perry's naval victory led to a national celebration, a commission of nine states working tirelessly for years to build a memorial in his honor, and most importantly, it led to an enduring peace between the United States, Great Britain, and Canada that continues today, more than 200 years later. It's an amazing friendship that has outlived generations that have used arbitration, negotiation, and peaceful resolution to remain steadfast allies. After the Battle of Lake Erie, someone coined the phrase, Perry's luck. Perry was lucky the wind changed and filled his sails so he could engage the British. He was lucky he survived the British assault on the Brig Lawrence when one in four men were killed or seriously wounded. He didn't have a scratch. And lucky he survived the longboat trip to the Niagara as British cannonballs came within feet of the small unarmed vessel. Maybe luck was bestowed on Perry because as a commander at war, he showed compassion and kindness towards his enemy. After a long, bloody battle, he reflected on the journey back to Putin Bay and decided to honor six men, not just three. Honor the idea of brotherhood, a vision of friendship, and a future of enduring peace. I could not agree more with the Ottawa County Historical Society chose the right man to represent us as part of the Ohio History Connections County History Barn Project. They chose the right man, the perfect barn, here on Bonnie and Ron Shimming's property, and a beautiful day to celebrate it. <laughs> on behalf of Perry's Victory and International Peace Memorial, and our entire staff, many, most, who are here today, <laughs> we're honored to be part of today's dedication, and we thank you for honoring Oliver Hazard Perry and his positive contribution to American history, Ohio history, and Ottawa County history. Thank you all. Lake Erie Shores and Island President Larry Fletcher. Well, I'm sure everyone in this group knows that back in the early 2000s, the same gentleman that painted this barn was crisscrossing around the state painting uh, bicentennial barns. 
And back in 2003, I was living in Zanesville, if anybody knows where that is, in the other corner of the state. And I bought this bank. And this is a bank that was uh, made to, uh, to be representative of the Muskingum County Bar uh, that was painted. And this is how much money I've saved in the <laughs> 11 years that I've been here. But I, uh, I, definitely, I definitely traded up by, uh, by accepting a position to come into this part of the state. But I've uh, held on to this the whole time. This is signed by the McCoys. This is a piece of McCoy pottery. And uh, I was hoping to get it signed by Mr. Hagen today, but I'll, I'll hold on to it and maybe catch up with him some other time. But I thought I'd bring that. And another coincidence is that two days ago, I was on my way to a meeting in Greenville, uh, which is in Dark County, one of the other handful of counties in Ohio that, that have a, a barn painted by uh, Mr. Hagen. And uh, Mr. George, you know who's on that barn, right? Danny Oakley. Danny Oakley. So I'm driving down State Route 105, I think it is. Uh, no, we're on 105. I was driving down 127, heading south toward Greenville, and uh, I look off to the right, and I see Annie Oakley on the horizon on the side of a barn with a saying that uh, I think it was, aim high and you will hit your mark. So, uh, so that was a very serendipitous uh, uh, opportunity just two days ago, and it makes today even more special to be here to to see this, I like this barn better than the one in uh, down in Dark County. <laughs> and, and I like this barn better than the, the one that my bank is modeled after, but uh, it was fun to have those things here. Uh, so really, uh, even more special to be here to, to thank Mr. Hagen, even though he's not here, Mr. George, the Ohio History Connection, uh, everybody on the Barn Committee, the National Park Service, and the Shimming family for uh, providing this canvas. Uh, and uh, as others have said, a perfect subject to choose in, in Commodore Perry. Uh, his image appears on the famous William Henry Powell, Perry's Victory on Lake Erie painting. Uh, many of you probably have seen that in the State House. If you haven't, go down to the Rotund in the State House sometime and, and you'll see that uh, image depicted there. It's also in the Senate chambers in, in, our, uh, in our congressional uh, uh, building, Capitol uh, building. Uh, it's also on a stamp, his image is on a stamp, and on a coin, a quarter, and many other places, including now on this barn here in Ottawa County. Uh, this region of Ohio, the Lake Erie Shores and Islands region, attracts about 10 million people a year, and they come here for many reasons, certainly for places like Cedar Point or the water parks, Putin Bay, fishing, boating, birding, and also for history, art, and the scenic rural areas that we have here. So I thought about it, history, art, in a rural area, all three of which are right behind me on this beautiful barn. And people that are driving down this road intending on seeing this are going to have a wonderful surprise, and those that just happen to be passing by will have that same wonderful surprise too. Now if you don't know, Lake Erie Shores and Islands uh, asked a videographer to come out here during the process of this painting. And uh, he was here the entire time, and uh, we've created a time lapse uh, of the entire painting process. Uh, in one minute and 42 seconds, you can watch uh, what took Mr. Hagen, you know, many days to create. Or, if you're a purist, you could slow it down and watch it in the actual <laughs> amount of time that it took him. And that you can do that on this uh, with the technology. So, whichever way you choose, I do encourage you to uh, go to shoresandislands.com and go to our YouTube page. Or uh, the folks from the Park Service who printed that program uh, have put the actual URL on the bottom of your program. I asked our staff to put that live at 2.30 p.m. So uh, if you have a smartphone, uh, after we're done here today, you can see that or you can see it from your desktop and you can watch it. It's pretty amazing, I think, to watch that go from a blank canvas to the, the completed product. So on behalf of all of us at Lake Erie Shores and Islands throughout the region, thank you so much to everybody involved in, in bringing this to reality. And, and I personally and all of my staff team look forward to promoting another treasure here in Ottawa County and the region. Thanks so much. One more, One more comment from Judge Paul Moon. Speaking without notes and approaching 80, I forgot the entire punchline of the story I was doing on the Battle of Lake Erie. It was the avowed purpose of the British, should they win, War of 1812 to move the boundary line between Canada and the United States down to the Ohio River. And then Henry Proctor, the British general in charge of the Detroit Theater, 
had promised Tecumseh and the native population that the entire Northwest Territory, the five states, would be set aside in perpetuity as a homeland for Native Americans, guaranteed by the British government. Now that was a pretty enlightened thing, especially for those times. It would never have worked, but that was their intention. Uh, so we would not have been Canadian. We would have been displaced, moved out, and sent on our way. So we have Perry to thank for that. So. Okay. <laughs> The Ottawa County Historical Society conducts hearth cooking classes at the Venetia Wolcott Keeper's House on Bayshore Road on the Danbury Peninsula. And as part of the hearth cooking class, we provide a cookbook of recipes. And one of the recipes inside the book that was uh, uh, submitted by a beloved Historical Society member, Sally Williams, is entitled The Oliver Hazard Perry Wedding Cake. We don't actually have the real cake. We asked Bassett Markets to make us a cake. Let me tell you, it's rich. It has, in addition to flour and eggs, currants, butter, sugar, uh, citron, nutmeg, last but not least, brandy. <laughs> so at the reception, please uh, join us for some cake. It's also going to serve as double duty today as a birthday cake. Today is Bonnie Bonnie's birthday. birthday. Oh. Yeah. Stay where you are for just a moment, stand or seat. Uh, the National Park Service is going to conclude the ceremony by discharging their carronade. I have to pronounce it correctly. It's a small, large caliber cannon. If you have sensitive ears, there it is. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. <laughs>